stocks. All right, we're going to talk investment outsourcing, also global growth stocks, where to put your money for the long term. Jonathan Hurdle is the chief executive of Hurdle. Callahan, his firm, has more than $17 billion under management. And Barron's recently ranked, Jonathan, one of the top 20 global wealth managers. Jonathan, congratulations and welcome to Bloomberg. Thank you. Nice so to be here. Talk a little bit about this thesis of global growth companies. Why does growth look good to you right now? The best companies in the world are the cheapest in the world right now. That's been true for quite a while. That doesn't mean that they're going to be the best performers over the next year. But as an investor with a real fiduciary time frame, I want to think about what's attractively priced, not what's likely to perform well over the next two months or three months. I really want to be an investor here. So if we look at the equity market today, and that's actually even more fairly priced after today, but prior to today, the equity market was about fairly priced, but it was bifurcated. And that is that the highest quality companies in the world were cheap and the low quality companies had actually outperformed. So we really think that over the long run, the best companies in the world are the place to put your money today. Now, talk about this idea of a fiduciary time frame. What does that mean? Well, I mean, you and I have talked about this before, but there is a huge uh, misunderstanding between investing and speculating. Investing is about acquiring future cash streams at the most attractive rate period. And a fiduciary time frame is three, five, seven, ten years, not three, five, could seven, ten months. Could be also a months. lifetime, right? I mean, a lifetime for certain types of investors. Right. But there is a huge premium in the marketplace for patience. So if you're not going to trade, if you're not fascinated by what the hedge funds are doing, and you're really looking for something that you want to own, because the price to cash flow is attractive, then it's a much simpler process. Talk about this notion of a bifurcated market that the growth companies, the premier growth companies as you describe them, are the least highly valued now. Is that because they're the most liquid and people can get in and out of them and in times of stress they say, just sell everything I've got? Well, really what happened is when the market was in a crisis, which, and by the way, this, this although it's a big day, is not a crisis, but when it was in a crisis, and the reason it was in a crisis is because the credit market stopped functioning. So when it came out of that, and the, world, and the world did not in fact end, you know, it's hard to imagine that just a year ago, we thought the world as we knew it was maybe going to end. Right. I mean, everything was off the table, right? Absolutely. I mean, we weren't going to have another day and everything was going to shut forever. It was going to be like some kind of nuclear winter. Right. So that the stocks that went down the most came up the most, and they were the ones with the most leverage. And so the companies that are lower quality, and what we mean by that is the most debt on the balance sheets generally bounced off the bottom the most. If you look at what per happened during the 2009, the low quality companies dramatically outperformed the, out the, the uh, high quality companies. What, that's, what does that mean? It means their prices went up. So the high quality companies' prices didn't go up, relatively speaking. And these are still the companies with the strongest balance sheets. That means the lowest, lowest debt to equity ratios, the most predictable earnings, the biggest market shares, the biggest international footprint, global earnings that you want to own. Now, I, know you, I know you're not a stock picker, but I mean, can you just give us some examples of these kinds of global growth companies you're talking and these about? These are household names. These are the ones that you never really get to buy at a discount. Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, um, you know, on an international stock, um, you know, GlaxoSmithKline, these kind of companies. Um, the companies Walmart. that aren't going away tomorrow. Right. Big, strong balance sheets, international businesses. They don't need to borrow. They are, have predictable earnings. They're gaining market share in, a, in a, uh, what is now an international, you know, globalized market. More consumers are buying Procter & Gamble products every day. You know, globalization hasn't gone away. Yes, you know, it is a more challenging market in the United States because we're competing globally. But all those countries that used to not participate in the free markets are now participating and consumers are stepping up. So the magic that people talked about, you know, a few years ago during the dot-com bubble even about the internet and communications and globalization is still there. And so, you know, it's easy to get negative on a day like today, but uh, we believe that uh, the credit markets are working today. This is not a crisis. This is a fundamental, it's just a down day. And uh, the markets, when they're functioning, can take tremendous body blows and bounce back very easily. So, you know, we're not predicting any, we're not traders, but we do see value in the marketplace. We think equities are fairly valued and high quality. These big high quality companies are actually attractively priced. Talk about the market for asset management and how there's a trend in outsourcing right now. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's an interesting thing to talk about, but we've been in this business for 22 years, and, and that is this notion of an outsourced CIO. Um, and it's really a function of market complexity. The market is dramatically more complex than it was when I started in the business 30 years ago. Um, there are, when I, the story I say is that when we started in business 30 years ago, you'd 
quarterly meeting, you'd talk about, do I own IBM or digital equipment? You know, it doesn't even exist anymore. Then they introduced the notion of, of allocation, stocks, bonds, cash. And then they introduced the notion of international, which really meant UK and Japan. So it became kind of a nine-cell matrix that you were dealing with. US, UK, Japan, stocks, bonds, cash. Today, it's a 50-cell matrix, and we get a new row and column every year. So it's just become overwhelming to people to try and deal with the complexity in the marketplace. I was in the green room listening to your former guest, and think about all the issues that the average investor is trying to assimilate after that conversation. So we're really moving to having a professional intermediary that's conflict-free, and that's what this outsourced CIO does. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, but I want to thank you very much, Jonathan Hurdle, coming to us from Hurdle at Calhoun. Appreciate your insight into the world of outsourcing asset management and all also international growth stocks.